Kavita Gupta is on the Ranveer show today to inspire every single young girl in the country but more importantly to inspire every single youngster in the country every single youngster who wants to make it big on the world stage this woman's story is incredible imagine the odds being stacked against you people are discouraging you from chasing higher education people are discouraging you from chasing your goals and you fight the odds you go abroad you establish yourself as one of the world's top vcs you establish yourself as one of the world's top fintech founders and this is only kavita gupta's beginning there's a long way to go for this legend but today she's on the runway show telling us her story till this point an extremely inspirational episode and if you guys want even more inspiration then remember to follow TRS on Spotify we're a Spotify exclusive now which means that every episodes available on Spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world enjoy this inspirational mentorship session from Kavita Gupta Kavita Gupta on the runway show. She's Queen K for me because of her queen-like story. Thank you for being on the runway show. Thank you, Ranveer, and thank you for not sharing me with thousand other female fans of yours. <laughs> <laughs> you are my queen. You're yeah. not. You're not just a fan or a listener. And how big is your harem? Ah <laughs> uh, no, no. My universe contains just one queen, and that's you. For today, guys, he you you can have him. <laughs> for today and also just you know for the rest of my life because your energy in my life is like a tattoo on my heart. Ah, oh, God! <laughs> Whenever I'm finding a guy, I'm sending him to you. Please train him. <laughs> I I I think I think you you have the kind of energy that will just attract whatever you want in your life because that's how your life has been also. So I feel like you're one of those people who just plays it cool when it comes to their life, but you're also one of those people who has had a life which can be turned into a movie. So at why? least you should watch it if it ever <laughs> happens. <laughs> you know, you're you're one of my big gifts from Twitter Spaces. <laughs> like we discovered each other. We should other. get paid for it though. At Twitter Spaces? Yeah. I think they're starting something like that. Oh really? Yeah. Mm. But how's your last uh, two years been? You're based in the US. Yes. And uh, you're also working in the Indian startup space a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. But how's the last two years been? I think 2020 is something everybody wants to somehow want to forget or something. But I actually had a very good 2020. I have to be very thankful. Um I discovered a lot of podcast including yours <laughs> right before actually end of 2019 but 2020 I got to really go deeper into lot of different things you do 2020 also made me less on the plane because I used to be on the plane every week mm. uh so being at one place finding your anchoring more meditation more healthy lifestyle spending time with just yourself mm. which could be uncomfortable in the starting mm-hmm. how long have you been in the us totally since 2003 yeah it's been yeah. a long long time so was this like your first sort of break because i know that the us can be a very capitalistic energy in a very good way there's mm-hmm. a lot of things i have learned from the us but it seems like this was like your first sort of full stop <laughs> and mumbai has very similar energy oh yeah 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 I feel like when I come to Bombay and I talk about my uh, like any travel or something people don't even blink their eyes. <laughs> so they're like, yeah. Um I think my life has been all about being like a gypsy. Mm. And maybe I liked it that way. Mm. So I resisted. I went into a little little depression like February March last year. Okay. the idea of not being on the plane the idea like i you're talking to somebody who actually sleeps best on the flight because i somehow feels like no internet i can just sleep and then i'll wake up and i have to run for a meeting and i know my best restaurants and my best shopping place and every terminal at every airport across the globe mm. so then staying in the place without your friends you can't socialize you're just there you don't know what's happening and with indian flights getting completely cancelled was the first time i couldn't do anything what i want to do there's mm. no choice mm. um so i went de- i had to go deeper into meditation i had to go comfortable with myself everything which i have been putting as my new year wish list for last 4 5 years finally happened without putting one on 
Mm-hmm. So I'm very grateful. I'm very thankful yeah, actually. I was telling you before this podcast started that you have very nice energy. <laughs> like <laughs> you're you. very like like you radiate a lot of positivity and uh, you know just I feel a lot of empathy. Mm-hmm. Like uh, honestly the team was a little late to the shoot but you were very <laughs> relaxed about it and uh it, it happens yeah it, it it is it is the nature of mumbai like uh, you know all these little things happen but my point of saying that is you just had such a nice calming energy on everyone and i feel people with this kind of energy have usually gone through moments of distress themselves <laughs> and from what i understand about you i feel your moments of distress weren't so much in the us mm-hmm. as they were probably before uh, and i always i feel like humans have their life divided into two sort of innings because that's how my life has also been <laughs> like i feel like for me till age 21 22 was very difficult and 22 is where i really started finding my feet and just things started falling into place and the life that i kind of wanted to live started mm. becoming a reality but did you always know that this is the life you wanted i knew that i wanted to be my own boss i knew that i wanted to do something which doesn't feel like work i knew i wanted to work with my own team mm. you know with a certain kind of energy i didn't know what i'll be doing But it, isn't it very exci- interesting that when you say all this stuff and you are 12 year 15 year 16 year old people just say you're lazy yeah the perception of all these things is you are lazy you are like above yeah. the pay grade thing you are thinking you're arrogant yeah you're arrogant everything everything negative mm. and when you actually do this then people are like intelligent yeah yeah <laughs> no if i think visionary right yeah someone had told me very early on that um if you have a vision for yourself and if you're you know under the age of 50 okay but if you have a vision for yourself uh often people will kind of laugh at that vision because people don't understand visions that are larger than society or larger than what is the societal norm but if you can really see something for yourself then you should try your best to manifest that and make it a reality but people our culture also tells you be humble Yeah. And their definition of humble is like uh just don't say anything aloud. Yeah. Something don't express yourself which is not normal. Yeah. Yeah. Because I had the same problem. I always I have no clue why and maybe it was wrong. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I always thought I was special. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> like you feel like you're in a film. Yeah, and you are the center. This of is all just happening. I am the actor of my own. <laughs> I'm sorry. This just reminds me of Kareena Kapoor's character. In but Jabbi Mein. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was already in US. I didn't see the movie, but I got 22 messages from my cousins and friends. They're like somebody made a movie on your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I think very early on someone had told me that if you scan the world of business, there's three kinds of business people. One is the energy execution, you know, hustle based person. One is the strategist who mm. can think a lot, and the third is the visionary. And uh, it's difficult being all three. All mm. three have their own challenges mm. and all that. But with the visionary specifically, I think you're talking about a lot of the challenges that I have also encountered, and I have heard people say that okay, visionaries have these kind of challenges where people don't understand you at every stage. Now imagine. now we being here if a 12 year old kid comes and say i am visionary you are not getting me mm. what would be your reaction though mm. yeah yeah because yeah. my niece tried to do that on me and i'm like you're not getting ice cream <laughs> <laughs> do, finish maybe, your homework <laughs> maybe your niece is the next kg <laughs> who knows yeah you know, your genetics have like gone into her as well oh. this kind of thought process this kind of vision but i actually want to ask you about your childhood also mm-hmm. uh, you've had a very typical indian childhood where i think a lot of at least i'm not sure about this but i assume a lot of people have told you that you wouldn't be where you actually have reached today uh, or people tried blocking your path and i also know that your dad played a huge role yeah, in yeah, yeah. in like pushing you along this path so today you're this like startup investor and you're flying from one country to another but at the beginning sometime in the 80s sometime in the 90s there were a lot of Thank questions god you didn't go to head. 70s yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you i'm a 80 child let me just yeah. accept it <laughs> but but uh, that if you could go back to the 80s to your mind then because there's a lot of young listeners listening mm. to this who will find themselves in your story also and for me the main reason for bringing you on this show is uh, this concept of hope which yeah. has become a theme of the show recently so i'd love for you to just share things about your mind from back then um i think I think the everyone as this every successful man has a very strong women 
I would say opposite is also true. Yeah. Equality is not about man bashing. Yeah. You know, I've been very fortunate to be born. In fact, I'm an adopted child. Okay. And my parents had the guts in 80s to say we don't necessarily have to adopt a boy child. Mm. Right? We can also adopt a girl child. Mm-hmm. So even though my adoption happened within the family from my chacha to my dad, which I think I'm a uh God's child, because yeah. thank God I got the dad I got. Yeah. Uh, they had the guts to be to break the norm very early, mm. right? And uh, and then I don't remember a single day when my dad told me, "You cannot get this because you are a girl." From day zero, I remember he told me, "If you work hard and convince me, you can do whatever you want to do." Mm. and as he started seeing me growing up i remember as a very marwadi dad i grew up in a big joint family our 26 27 people 30 did, people did you i'm 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 just going to ask you yeah. straight up did you live with your biological parents also yeah yeah they were like they are my chacha chachi till okay. today they have three kids uh we we had like different floors with one kitchen everyone so my chacha chachi was a floor above like you kevin hart as your friend yeah, yeah, yeah. and kevin hart i won't ha- call him a friend but yeah i like know him he's well. he's had a difficult childhood but with a lot of positivity like we actually see his documentaries mm-hmm. his mom his dad had a good effect on him especially yeah. his mom yeah, and yeah. that's what you see today the hard work the goodness all that and i'd say the same about you oh thank you i think i should give that award to mom and dad yeah. <laughs> who has the guts but i agree with you because i had this joke actually Anurag Kashyap uh, once uh, I have actually worked with him is a dear 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 friend uh, Anurag was once saying I was trying to watch some Sha- uh, Karan Johar's new movie and I'm a big rom com chick person <laughs> and he's like why do you like these movies what is this there's like a uh, watch black and this and all that stuff and I'm like sir I never got raped. I never got abused. My childhood was very happy. Uh, like you uh, know, um, nobody did anything. So I don't connect with this. They are. I'm sure it has its market, but let's not look down upon like mm. just a chick flick or mm. something like that. I remember, like I think, uh, um, I also feel there is a big impression which is left on your brain based on your childhood. Uh, but i also don't like when people love to blame their parents for everything mm. they are they are human they are not mm. perfect mm. neither are we mm. right so take the best thing and the things which you don't like make sure you don't do it mm. but like all th- everything about therapy is to just say my parents messed it up that's why i'm like this i don't think that's fair yeah 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 I think uh, very few parents don't give it their best shot. Honestly, this is at least in India. I can talk for India for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Indian parents just uh, when they see a child, their automatic intention is, "No, I want to do the best for this yeah, kid." Yeah. Most Indian parents for sure. And the best can be relative, no? Yeah, yeah. Comparatively. Yeah. But intentions, you're right. Yeah. So, what did you study in college? I'd love to know <laughs> this. I was a good Indian girl, yar. I had a crush on the guy who was in non-medical <laughs> in schools. That's how I discovered non-medical. And mm. my parents were like, "Vera, do arts, commerce. There's nobody who's doing engineering in our family. Like, we have no way to help you or support you." Yeah. Little did they know, like I was <laughs> looking for support somewhere else. <laughs> 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 so only so that I can be on tuitions with that guy, I decided my whole career, <laughs> wow. which is to go into non-medical. Wow! I should thank him somewhere. I don't even know where he is in this life. <laughs> You're not in touch with him? <laughs> no, no, no. We never talked. Oh, okay, that way. But but so you you went into engineering college? I did. I uh, I my I grew up in a big joint family, and uh, in a Marwadi, and a lot of people would. connect with it in a typical marwadi delhi jaipur family it's a very simple thing for a grandmother to say a girl only leaves house after getting married right and i used to laugh about this never realizing how serious this thing is at what age do they expect you to get married 21 wow <laughs> that's uh-huh. what happened with all my cousins like 21 22 you are old by 23 by the way you're not going to get good rishtas by then <laughs> <laughs> okay even now that's the case 24 maximum now okay okay 
but like i uh, yeah my i am still a black sheep of the family for my grandmother yeah <laughs> which is a cool thing guys be yeah. one <laughs> yeah, it's I, okay I, i think again that visionary mold always contains this black sheep tag attached yeah i was like so i got into mit mm. and my grand first of all nobody knew what mit was in my house they knew harvard because they have heard about this in like movies they knew wharton and and the reason they knew wharton and stanford because mr ambani's kids have gone there mm. so they have heard about this on mm. tv so they knew three colleges and mit is not one of those three colleges so i was crying mm. because i could not believe that i got through and my mom and dad were saying beta it's fine next year you'll get into good college oh wow <laughs> <laughs> it's okay <laughs> don't cry <laughs> my god but how did you even get into mit it's not because that guy was preparing no He was preparing for oh, okay. He went. He was preparing for engineering. Then he was taking SAT classes. So I took SAT classes. Then wow. he was applying for all this, and I was like, I'll also apply. And you actually got it. I got through. He didn't. We never talked. Wow. So that was my first case of saying somebody can inspire you to do things which you don't even realize the value, mm. but they don't become the end goal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nobody is an end goal. No individual can be your end goal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was not easy to accept at that time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, but I think when I look back, I know one or two friends of mine who dropped out of really really good jobs to be with the guy they wanted to, and their families didn't want a working daughter-in-laws. And I think I could have made the same mistake with respect to even my college. at that point because everyone around the society finds it acceptable for things like this you know they give you terminology you are uh, more amenable you are more uh, there is this hindi terminology or sushil mm, mm. you know and i don't know how letting go of your own career your own choices for somebody else who probably ne- not going to do the same for yeah. you yeah. has become a quality Yeah. in our life and we teach that very early to girls early mm. on in our life as a good benchmark mm. that you know you should be ready to sacrifice your own happiness ah, for yeah. mm. oh you have to compromise is a very normal terminology you hear everywhere mm. but i don't understand without caveats how does you have to compromise become an acceptable terminology no i don't want to compromise mm. or what is the cost opportunity of that compromise <laughs> <laughs> at at that stage um were you were you sure about what you wanted to do in life no yeah did you know you'll go down this path at all no so what, what i didn't know what vc was you're oh. talking about a girl who was going to bindravan every sunday with her dad <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you talking about who is going to tell me what is vc that's why i tell a lot of kids like go with the flow do things which you really really enjoy but you're sure you're really good at it hmm you know we can have 10 hobbies in life right i love dancing i'm a certified kathak dancer but i knew very early on i can never make money out of dancing do you still practice yeah yeah i do i teach wow. also in us wow yeah that's like one of the things on the weekend it's like a guru thing they tell you that just keep on teaching so i for free i teach in a, a temple out there i'm sure month. it's also therapeutic for you it is yeah, yeah. wearing those uh, things back like ghungru's back and then just be on the floor is very very it Fe- makes you feel rooted and like yeah free so it basically teaches you the power of technique uh, at least that's what i i remember even my parallel was with uh, judo it's all about like where's your hand where's your leg uh, where's your back yeah uh, but i feel with indian classical dance you have to also think of where's your mind where's your facial expression oh, so it's facial expressions technique. i remember i used to get like lot of those stick things like your hypro didn't go up wow <laughs> like, okay Wow, it's that level yeah, of technique. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, the obvious application of it in the real world is not just dance; it is it is mindset. Uh, exactly what you said that just prepares you for life. But we are using those facial expression everywhere, right? When mm. you are sitting, like in my life today, the idea that facial expression actually conveys your sorrow, your joy. your devotion to someone your romance a same eyebrow one up 
one down is more about bewilderment versus both at some point is about happiness uh what are we doing we are also playing a role in our today's business life when mm. i'm sitting in front of a founder i really like versus a founder i really like i'm not going to invest versus a founder i don't know but i want to invest or to the investor i always think through like somewhere in my mind is going through what are my facial expressions going also making them comfortable does does indian classical dance also help you read people better because you oh, become a master yeah. of expressions yourself yeah so you can tell what people are thinking body often. language body language wow. so like uh, i was i think it was one of your podcasts you guys were talking about sitting like this versus Probably. sitting like this somebody was talking about it and i was laughing watching it i was cooking something i was and the ct was going on the cooker and i was <laughs> laughing because in classical dancing they tell you how to sit you you're like whether uh, your torso is more towards the person back towards the person mid level all these things are used and we practice it to convey a particular message without speaking wow so when we are naturally in the flow now i don't even realize how my torso is but at the end of 10 minutes of that conversation i say oh my torso moved from here to here i've got comfortable with this thing mm. and you you were speaking about founders you don't like versus founders you like mm. um what what makes you like versus not like the person because i'm sure you're not talking about just business here you know uh, you're talking about the person's energy yeah, what yeah. they bring to a room so you're able to sense that also that what are this person's intentions really or is it a confused person or a straightforward person so it's i think it comes with the years of investing and talking to people a lot of vcs i talk to they're like oh you do three four deals we go deep into the data we look at the product we look at the market adoption i feel this is all bullshit to be honest mm. when a company is new they just have a deck what data do you have they're going to say we're going to make 50 billion dollar in next one year it's an excel sheet i can create on a white paper that i'll make 50 billion dollar mm. like what's a guarantee mm. right you are actually investing in a person mm. and to invest in a person it used to be the date of iit im iv league uh, or something or which school uh, which uh, companies have you worked for they don't matter anymore right because all the three founders of twitter are drop off mm. so is facebook like the famous story and so so many companies right the dropbox founder is from mit he almost skipped an year he was the laziest guy on the campus mm. do you still did so well with dropbox yeah right i think it is about whether that person is agile enough to take your feedback and actually either have a very strong powerful answer to say thank you so much for your feedback I agree or I don't or I disagree because of these reasons. I only look for that. Mm. Because if the founder is going to take everything and change, that means he's not sure about what he's building. There's no, you yeah. know, strength in it. That's not conviction. Mm. But at the same time, if it is too rooted strong that there is no agility, then he also he or she also has the tendency to take the company down because of their ego. Mm. and you've seen this happen oh yeah 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 i've invested in founders who have pivoted three times and have written it off in my internal review that this company is never going to make money and they became one of our most successful company in the portfolio wow yeah yeah then there was a guy i invested in who's like everything was perfect like you know iit delhi hbs google five years exactly in the same thing which he was trying to do outside we were the first investor but three months into it i actually took him out for a long trek and i said are you sure your heart is in this because building a company is a very lonely depressing job <laughs> mm. Mm. you know when you're working in a multinational every the whole infrastructure is taken care of you yeah. have to just show up building a company means also you are sweeping the floor you are making the coffee and there's no shame in it whatsoever mm. you know not everyone can do it mm. even if you're capable of doing it yeah well, have you always been so observant about <laughs> life i mean i'm sure you're you're giving me your professional observations but even for those professional observations to come up in your head there has to be years of learning years of being able to learn fast So going back to two thousand three, when you went to USA, 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल हाउ डिड यू कन्विंस द रेस्ट ऑफ योर फैमिली डिड यू हैव टू कन्विंस द रेस्ट ऑफ योर फैमिली टू इयर्स यू कन्विंस देम या आई माय रिबेल वाज लाइक आई एम नॉट गोना ईट वाओ बिक आई वाज लाइक व्हाट आई कुडंट बिलीव आई फेल लाइक आई एम इन अ मूवी आई एम इन सम एकता कपूर टीवी सीरियल एंड आई एम द विक्टिम हियर यू नो एंड आई एम लाइक दिस इज नॉट हैपनिंग टू मी I mm. was so sure this is not happening to me. So, um so the first one and a half month was like what just happened. Then it was like okay, I can't just stay at home. I have to do something, but I have not really applied anywhere. Mm. So where do I go now? Mm. <laughs> what do I do with my life? Uh then once I I started my engineering at IP college, uh, IP University, MIT in India. And then I actually met a lot of really intelligent people there, which changed my perception of like, oh, I am going to MIT, to like these are all intelligent people. India's competitive scale is just completely different. It is way more competitive to any college across the globe. Yeah. So I made some really close friends who are still very close friends of mine, and I just started realizing just live life. Something would happen. but i made sure that even when i was doing that i was just working very hard um but at the same time at home i would just keep, i knew my dad is the soft one so i kept on telling him <laughs> you have to go and convince your mom <laughs> yeah yeah i've done this <laughs> but this is a life skill um especially in family dynamics and in india where we have so many up and down yeah. family dynamics you need to have the ability to communicate what you're feeling mm. to the other person and kind of use your sales skills there also to get your work done um it it's something that young indian kids should learn i feel because most of the young indian kids are in nuclear family mm. they get whatever they ask for mm. right i grew up in a huge joint family mm. even getting a glass of water on time is a diplomatic skill mm. there is one kitchen everybody has the requirements there is a hierarchy set up even before you are born mm. so as a 4 year old kid you know where in hierarchy you have an importance which is dependent upon so many things honestly there is a whole different show you can do on joint family hierarchy so you have two ways to survive be observant and understand what can you get by like you can get through a knot second things things which are your break deals like you have to have to have it you can either go and rebel and like create a whole scene and like always have your parents be uh saying sorry for you in front of 20 other people or you develop your own skills to get it and that's where i came you know i i love my parents they gave me anything i asked for but i also knew their limitation so i can either put pull like put them down saying oh you can't get me this or i say i'm a part of the unit and let's figure out how to get it but this <laughs> is right i want it <laughs> wow right and my dad was very clear i'll support you till you get things with your hard work but i'm not going to pay you to go to any school or college hmm. so i did that so observation which you were talking about was coming from there who is in a good mood today hmm <laughs> who who's going to uh, like will, if i share this extra ice cream with someone's kid will that mom let me mm. do this mm -hmm. you know the whole my own game of throne was happening there <laughs> <laughs> and i think that's what uh, we see life is also on many levels exactly there's a very famous line i recently so funny i heard it on insta reels and i'm like oh my god i've heard it before from somewhere uh it was something like kill them with your success and bury them with smile mm you yeah. right yeah. and it just reminded me of those days because you can't fight now mm. as first you are a kid nobody is going to take you seriously they're going to slap you and put you in the corner mm. <laughs> so you can't fight and you can't shout so smile is the only way mm. and compromise as they say so you decide in your mind you negotiate in your own mind what you are ready to give to get what you want and is that a right trade or not mm. so every founder even today i tell them day zero when we are funding them i said taking funding from us because we are early stage investors mostly when we are writing the first check now all your problem starts it hasn't it hasn't got solved it's actually started 
because now you're going to make the season on every dollar you're going to spend from this is having an assistant way more important for you or adding that assistant money to your engineer mm. is more important for you having a support in your office to have coffee or tea is more important for you or having a better table mm. when your clients are coming is more important for you mm. i'm like now you just started on a journey this is why a lot of people are afraid of taking vc money especially in india mm mm-hmm. they are unsure about what will happen after they take vc money but then on the flip side when you hear american entrepreneurs talk about these things they say that that money that i took was probably the best 10% or the best 20% of my startup that i've given away uh it was the best decision i made in my life indian vc the game has changed in last couple of years but before that it was never a real vc firm it was like family offices who are literally giving you loan 16% return 20% return they are not builders themselves they were not at least at that time even 5 6 years back i remember see the difference with vcs are in us or the global what we say they come with the background of building companies or working with lot of companies with their product market fit or the problems which come over here it's like oh it's your idea you take all the risk you do all the hard work i'm giving you money but if you don't return it i'm going to go to the whole world and say you are a loser why mm. he is not a loser even if the company didn't work the amount of knowledge you pick up when you actually when the company doesn't work is way more valuable when everything works because mm. you don't learn at that point of time mm. you're just going with the flow mm. and that's why y combinator i love this thing about y combinator all their partners are the people uh who have failed companies behind them with the funding from y combinator because what they can teach the entrepreneurs that don't do this hmm is way more important than do this yeah 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 i feel that i th- i hope yeah. that culture kind of comes to india in a much more mainstream way because there are a lot of young indian entrepreneurs who are consciously nowadays thinking of bringing tech into their businesses in some form and we need that yeah, you know yeah. um, there is this whole wave in the, and just just watch out for this over the next 10 years there's going to be a lot of india to the globe companies dude it's going to be biggest in blockchain okay. sorry i had to come to my no, topic no no, no. <laughs> yeah. i mean which is already happening yeah. so um when we started with the web one world which i call like till google mm. or at google uh india was nowhere even entrepreneur india was just all about let's send all our iits to abroad mm. and they'll figure out something mm. Mm. and so with starting from 2005 6 like with google facebook and all that stuff then the indian engineer started going from engineering to top management sales mm. position 8 9 10 11 is when they started transitioning into vc positioning because now they had all this very senior level experiences and then us started seeing indian entrepreneurs coming at that time but india was still like catching up then we saw ai then we saw ar vr then india started doing some companies in house fintech of course has been one of the biggest cases for the country now what we are seeing in blockchain is the product coming out of india is what the whole world is following wow it's almost matic we are is... talking about polygon we are talking about insta da Mm. A twenty-one and a twenty-three-year-old brother is creating eight point four billion dollar company in two and a half years, mm. and every DeFi protocol across the world, none of them are from India, are all on their platform. You know, and this is like kayak of ticketing, mm-hmm. and so that's what they are aggregator of every DeFi project. Mm. I couldn't believe when I was reading about them, and then I had a long conversation with Samyak Jain, the founder, and the CTO. and i am just like and i've met him 2 years back at eat a uh, hackathon and i remember even i didn't buy what he was selling at that day and 2 years only now now 2 and a half years now when i'm sitting with the guy i have a complete different pride in that founder mm. you know and the whole world is talking about it same thing is even look at our exchanges right we will go through regulations whatever happen but the idea of creating a product for indian market not like taking coin bases of the world and let's customize it they're like no we'll create the product because we understand tier 2 tier 3 market mm. 
mm-hmm. and that is what we're going to create for yeah. it's just completely like i am so impressed with coin switch could be like ashish the founder um and and his vision for next 10 years make me think like so many founders across the world we have invested a lot in israel argentina brazil egypt a lot in africa his two hour of conversation is still stuck in my head mm. of how is thinking about the future instead of keep on telling me oh we have done this we mm. have done this mm. we are reaching these many people no he was just more excited about what's next um i have so many questions <laughs> about the future for you but maybe maybe towards the end of this particular episode we'll tackle that topic yeah, yeah. that's that's my favorite topic to speak <laughs> about generally on the show um i feel the world needs more futurists in general uh, people who think consciously about what's coming our way because we're at the brink of a lot of newness before the future can we please have a lot of more women we see do you see that changing not much it on the board of 18 companies not even a single woman on the board you know i that's where i'm still struggling between the stories we present out to the world and what do you really see in the space but why is that like why does that happen in the first place you know it's very funny i'll tell you a story um uh, there's this company we invested in i was a managing partner and i had two guys working with me as principal one principal one senior analyst uh i was a lead in the company and i was on the board of the company and that founder would host poker nights and would invite my principal and other vcs but would never invite me and of course i would get to know that there are like these poker parties happening in his office once every friday every month and all the other vcs who are on board with me and all these people are being invited i was never invited so i thought like i can either just keep on thinking like am i not being nice to them because every time we would have a monthly catch up he was super sweet to me um he would bring me chinese goods like a uh, very very sweet guy so then one day i decided to make it as a joke and bring it up so i said oh am i going to be invited to your poker party and he's like oh it's all boys i don't know whether you will be comfortable Mm. So I'm like what do you guys do do you guys watch porn <laughs> like what do you guys do that I will not be comfortable I'm a very good poker player mm. I can also drink like what do you guys do that I won't be comfortable mm. he didn't have the answer mm. but I still didn't get the invitation mm. right so these are this is just one example which I knew and I had to live with it even at that position so I feel like there are still silos optically everybody has worked out what to say again but i think i think in your <laughs> story specifically uh this all these dynamics these observations it took you some time from 2003 to i'm assuming 2013 or 14 is where you began with your vc journey 15 15 yeah uh but i was i actually started investing from ifc and world bank starting from 2009 itself what 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 happened from 2003 to 9 Like um, I did my college media lab then I five I graduated uh joined the World Bank trading floor started doing my masters along with it trading floor was also very exciting because I had the super boss Nina Shapiro the only ever women treasurer or IFC and after that it was me an analyst who was women mm. and then there was assistants mm. that's it mm. <laughs> so it was very exciting like you and honestly speaking because co- coming from engineering college where anyways you have two three girls and even in my i went to zavius for my high school junior school and high school even there in 11th 12th and you take computer science we were four girls in the whole class mm. right you know we work with a lot of women like across our startups and they bring a very different kind of energy to product like it's more empathetic it's more um in many cases reliable like uh, <laughs> uh where if 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 someone has proven that they can like they'll work at a certain level then i just know i have to just tell them that okay try getting this done and it'll be done way better than what i'm expecting also so women do bring this kind of different energy to startups but i feel that we still have 10 years to go in terms of what you're saying about uh, the gender equalizing the gender ratios equalizing there's some time for this world to discover and it's everywhere it's not like us has figured yeah. it out or uk has figured it out honestly it's everywhere i don't 
Nordic countries are a different breed altogether. Mm. But apart from Scandinavian countries, the rest of the world is catching up. The problem is there are a lot more women in the workforce. But at what level is where the question comes? And then people, and I have raised that question in a lot of women forum. But I want to stop raising it in women forum. I want to raise it in a big group. You're, you're saying that um, for some reason, women do not get promoted or whatever as fast as men do or uh, like you you'll basically see the higher positions occupied mostly by guys or there will be one women token for diversity God. in everything hmm. so i'll give you an example of my own life right uh i had amazing bosses when i was young and growing up in fact i have a lot of amazing uh male bosses to thank a lot in my life um I went to start raising my fund, my first fund, which I'm like, we're closing now. A um, lot of billionaires in my space. So I do. A, I have been investing in blockchain very early in this ecosystem. I've been mining since 2013, very early adopter. Uh, so I have one of the most extensive track record in the space, right, which people build up. Some are like really successful multi-billion dollar company, like... I invested 500K at $5 million valuation at in BlockFi. It's a $5 billion company in three years, mm. right? So things like that, I'm a bunch of them like that. So I'm like, I have done well. My track record is great. My returns are great. Now I should do my own fund. And a lot of billionaires, multi-billionaires who are now getting into the space don't have deep understanding. They were like, why are you doing your fund? I'll give you a billion dollars, just work for me. Mm. So they kept on trying to ask me to work for them. But they were not ready to give me a million dollar. But they trust me to take their billion dollar. Mm. Got it. And so literally one guy, a British guy, I got so irritated. I just asked him on his face. I'm like... Anyways, I'm not going to get to meet him after this. So let me be as mean as possible. <laughs> <laughs> what did so you say? I said, so you trust me with billion dollar and you're mm. going to pay me like one, two million dollar base to run this fund. Plus I'm going to take 50% carry. Plus I'm going to take a lot of bonus. But when I'm doing, when I'm asking you to pay, give me five million dollar for my fund, you don't trust me for that. Mm. And like, and, and you have no technical skills or experience to be on the investment committee with me. So it's basically my sole decision in either case. So what changes? Mm. And he's like, no, no, no. We want to promote women of color in our organization. Wow. God. So the mindset is optic. Mm. I, well, women of color is running my fund. But it's my fund. Like for him. Mm. You know? That's where you start seeing the gap. So we have taken out a lot of nuisance at the early stage when people start their career. We have taken out a lot of it at the mid-level. Now from a senior level, when you are a decision maker, to be an owner, oh my God, we have added more nuisance there. Mm. Um, what, what is your goal right now with everything you're trying to do? Because there's a lot of things going on. Like mm. in your life. So career wise, like what are you aiming for? I mean, I honestly, anything I've planned has never happened. So I don't want to plan. But I think I want to uh, continue to work with amazing founders. I think there is, it's like you make one or two uh, babies. Like these are all like your own babies, especially when you go early stage. You go through exactly the same process. At C after Series B, if you're an early investor, you have to also let go of them. Mm. It's like they're going to college now. Mm. <laughs> let go. Mm. They're going to find new new friends now. Got it. You know? So I want to do a lot of that. Uh, and I don't know where life will take. Yeah? My life has been crazy. I also ended up creating a media company, which I never thought in COVID. Now it has become so big that we are now literally looking for the management team. But mm. Fintech TV started with, let's just do 10 episodes from New York Stock Exchange to teach people new technology to 850 million household access, mm. right? I never thought I would have a media company. I still don't know what to do with it. Mm. Um, I, uh, But I think my legacy, if there is this terminology which is good, is uh, this dream since child. I was a, I didn't know what do I want to become. 
I always knew it's going to be like red carpet wherever I go. That's how I used to imagine the manifest you are talking about yeah, yeah. is getting awards for something I have done like Indra Nui. That's mm. all I used to look for myself. Mm. I had no idea what did that mean. Mm. But the legacy I want to do is I want to open bunch of orphanages and old age home together on one property with the best education which is not based on charity mm. i don't want to raise money i don't want to ask for money but with my own savings the best teachers the best educational service because i truly truly believe that access to education defines people's life and it's not like cbsc education mm. of course that is there but giving that access equal access to kids coming out of orphanage mm. what do you feel like i mean because you're highlighting education and i love your goal and i'm sure you'll <laughs> achieve it like uh, going by you know everything uh, that you already done uh, but what do you think your education did for you like in uh, you know your own career because okay the narrative but lately has been okay it's all about ed tech education is not good and i get that i am a part of that narrative i have also spoken so much against the indian education system uh, and over time as i've grown up i've realized oh okay the indian education system doesn't just apply to urban kids like myself mm, yeah but it's applying to like the rest of the country the villages uh, you know for them it's aspirational the same yeah. education system that we make fun of or that we say is going to become outdated um but specifically for you what has your education given you for your career i'm talking about your higher education going abroad or studying engineering you feel like it gave you weapons it definitely gives you weapon on your resume for mm. your first job mm. right that's all i think it is i don't even remember the classes i took it's like a qualification ki you can ha huh, now you're capable you can logically this. think mm. you can you have you're coming from a company of people who are intelligent you could so this is like more about le- higher probability of this person coming from here to pick up what we going to teach them mm. and do it mm. Mm. but it's not better or less than anybody who's not coming from that degree and it doesn't speak of her or his qualification to be very honest yeah, yeah. because i have not coded a single day to save my life yeah yes yeah, same right i did my masters international affairs trade and economics while working full time at the world bank because yeah. i wanted to un- i was passionate and i really wanted to understand economics yeah that's that's also something very nice you highlighted i also not coded ever but yeah. and people associate big startups and tech and growth with coding they think that oh you need to know coding to be able to do this and that was my mental block as well and i was in college i thought oh i don't know how to code how am i ever going to become an entrepreneur but it's not like that like yeah. there are other human skills your joint family skills <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think observation and travel. Yeah. I tell everyone like my niece, nephews, lot of kids who come for mentoring, I said travel. Hmm. But don't travel from your parents money. Hmm. Earn the money yourself. Do backpack travel and hmm. do like safe jobs different places, figure it out. Hmm. Because then you actually understand how world works, yeah. Hmm. Otherwise you are like a frog in the well and you are the king or the queen of your own well. your parents are like you did very well in school today <laughs> and all that stuff this is something zakir khan told me zakir khan is a stand up comic he's in yeah, yeah. like most i really love yeah. his stuff but he's actually an intellectual and a hmm. poet and he's a thinker hmm. uh and i i remember this one phase where i was nervous about something that was going on in my life and he noticed that i was nervous through my tweets or something he called me he's like what happened why are you like doubting yourself so much so i explained my reasoning for doubting myself and he said that see there are two kinds of people in the world one are the performers and one other the second is the non performers and the performers will always do their best in the job that's given to them they'll do to the best of their ability obviously they'll also choose jobs yeah, which they yeah, know yeah. they'll be able to do but as long as you're a performer it'll just protect you and knowing that you're a performer automatically kills off self doubt so then what is self doubt it's usually thinking a little bit about the future yeah. and saying that oh no i may not be relevant i may not be able to do it but you've done it till this point so of course you'll be able to do it going forward the real question to ask yourself is if today that task that's given to you are you performing to the best of your ability like are you giving it to 200 and that's the only thing in your hand right yeah. what else is in your hand yeah i i am looking at a company and i want and i'm thinking from a very open mind i want to invest in it 
there is nobody in this world who can come and tell me no this company will be successful mm. no one mm. you think some of the biggest vcs in the space a16z or sequoias of the world they never had failures mm. did they invest thinking are this company will fail let's invest in it mm. who does it mm. right but not every bet not every work is going to work out but because you did it with so much integrity and hard work the same people or the same work will speak somewhere else mm. so that's the only thing in your hand and my dad is very spiritual yeah. very early on he told me this he said and i know in geeta everybody loves to recite it but the thing is how many of us really practice it right so i always say uh if today i'm supposed to do something i and i'm really excited about it i'll try to do it there are situation when the other person comes back like sometimes you're really interested to invest in a founder you've got your whole team on board you've done your diligence etc etc by the time you've done it the founder comes back to you and say oh, our valuation has increased somebody else has given us a higher valuation either match it or we don't want your money and that maybe that valuation doesn't work for you so what do you do <laughs> you have to decide and let it go and you will have a evening where you want to sit and like what the hell mm. there was no respect <laughs> but you know that shouldn't stop you from performing the next day yeah but it should also you should i what i've learned the hard way is you should also just wish the best to that founder yeah because he or she is doing what is best for them yeah they are not personally against mm-hmm. you or something mm-hmm. so i have also invested finally in a founder who passed on me twice yeah in the past and then the third time just because even after him passing he, every time he would meet me in a social space in a vc dinner or something i was always nice to him and say hey what's going on oh you're doing this by the way i know this person if you want to connect with mm. that could help your product that could help your marketing you know that's the job of a vc you're adopting a kid and you're like thinking about what else to add to it and i still did it yeah. so the third time he came he said whatever valuation you want to do it i want you in friends and family room forget about vc room mm. because he liked you mm. i want to highlight something uh, this is a concept of thought of from the beginning of my career but only now have i kind of given it words mm-hmm. okay so i feel with your work and your professional life instead of viewing it as your professional life view it how you would view a person because all of us believe in karma we know that if you're nice to someone that niceness will return if you're mean to someone that meanness will return <laughs> but even with your professional life view it as a person and if you're giving it your 100% 100% results and maybe even more will return yeah. in the same way if you view it as oh no i'm not going to be that serious about it i'm not it's it's fine i'll give it my 80% when you internally know you're not giving it your all then your results are also going to be 70 to 80% and this is something that a lot of people think they know but they don't really know which is why um i feel that again when you see setbacks when you see failures that shouldn't stop you from giving 100% the next day oh yeah, yeah. then you sh- you should be like okay yeah. next and, <laughs> and also a part of viewing it as a person isn't isn't just internal it's all these professional battles we have now your whole professional world is one person according to me if you're wishing bad for someone else in that professional world you're saying oh no the hand of that person is bad oh, it's yeah. like it's like wishing for a part of that one person to suffer because maybe it's your competition maybe it's someone who wronged you there are very few people like that though because yeah. how much energy does it take to have a very revengeful or a personal agenda driven like yeah. even the people who comes with an agenda their idea is not to put you down yeah. their idea is they need to win yeah yeah and um you know i i feel there's there's a little more of that in india mm-hmm. um generally this is what i've observed even from twitter and all it's india is a little more angsty place and kunal sha uh, also <laughs> keeps highlighting that the whole crab story that is a reality of just the indian uh, but i think culture. it also depends upon how you read it yeah because mm-hmm. lot of those thing won't even affect you mm. i had a meeting where after 3 hours of like keep on asking me questions about the fund blockchain crypto keep on a guy who the reason he's sitting on that much money is not because he worked a single day in his life yeah is coming from his grandparents of like generational wealth mm. all he has done in his whole life is to go to uk on a paid degree mm. come back and started investing his grandfather's money mm. 
and he's sitting and grilling me for three hours. Uh-huh. And after three hours, he made a comment. Yeah. And he said, um, so I think you're going to jail. Wow. So I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> he's like, yeah, because I still think that uh, crypto is uh, illegal. Mm. I said, okay, no worries. I said, you know so many people. If I do, do help me at that time. As mm-hmm. a smile, with, mm-hmm. with a smile, as a joke. Thank you so much. He left. Then there was this person who arranged the meeting and she started apologizing profoundly. And I'm like, why? And she's like, he asked you a lot of tough questions and this and that. I'm like, you know, what did I learn from this? This guy is now thinking, how did she do it? Mm. So those last 30 minutes was not because he's a wrong person and I am a wrong person. It is is the inferiority complex coming from a lot of things which I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. And I, that teaches you. Yeah, I feel definitely and I agree with you uh, that a lot of, if if at all there is any negativity thrown at you, it's always from a place of insecurity on that other person's part and you have to just recognize it. But I think my point of highlighting that person concept is that you don't throw any negative vibe towards any part of your professional world and it takes time for people to understand this because often what happens is if you are mocked if you are slapped by something in your professional world just turn away and do your own thing rather than trying to go back at it because it'll it'll come back in like 10 different ways I always tell founders who gets into legal battles with for one or the other reason, it's inevitable in the startup yeah. community. If you truly, when you are alone in a room, I always say, wake up in the morning, be alone in your room and tell to yourself that this legal battle is something you deserve. Whatever you're fighting for, you honestly deserve it. If that's what you tell, if that's what comes from inside when you're alone, it's a right battle, go for it. Mm. because you cannot lie to yourself yeah. you know it yeah you and, always know it there's so much energy that goes into those things like why, why rather <laughs> put energy into building turn away from it yeah but sometimes you have to fight for your rights yeah to make sure bullies have a way you stop bullies right mm. so that is why i always say that if in the morning that's your answer and you look into my eye and telling me this is why you're going we i'll get all the vcs to come and back you yeah yeah how how does your family look at this this version of you now? <laughs> like how because they at one point they were telling you no no get married at twenty. Oh, they're still telling me. <laughs> to like get they're still married. putting marriage pressure. Yeah yeah yeah. But but uh, do they do they know what you've done? Like are they? Oh, I think my parents do. Okay. I think they also. Uh, I think it's always about perception. Success failures is about how other people, sees you and look at you. So I think when now they come and they see the type of meetings I do or the places I speak at or the when the companies go public or the type of money which comes in, they're like, okay, she has done something. I don't think my dad still understands what exactly. is blockchain, mm. what is crypto, what do I really do? But he knows that she, whatever she's doing, it's right. And mm. she seems happy mm. because that is also a very important part he always told me. You need to be happy. Mm. And... Uh, my mom doesn't understand anything. All she watches when some video comes up is like, am I looking good or not? <laughs> is this a good video to share with her friends to see if there's a boy available wow. or not? <laughs> <laughs> do, do, you, do you think about marriage? Um, I think it's a very organic thing. Mm. It This age and space of my life, um, you cannot go through and say, Acha main kal, I have to get married. So let's see who is available around, mm. you know, and there's nothing wrong with when people do that. But the thing is, and this may sound very calculative, but honestly, I, this is how I think of it. Uh, when you reach a particular stage in your life, you're not looking for a partner for financial dependency or support. You're also have enough friends in today's life to not 100% emotional. Mm. There is no single person, I believe, who can give you mental simulation on everything you want to do in your life. Mm. Right? You are looking for a partnership. Mm. And that partnership is all, then you are looking for trust, love and respect. Right? Now, whatever the, with such crazy busy life and you are always on the plane, uh, 
finding that person is hard but then i believe in destiny so i'm sure at some airport i'm going to meet him some airport <laughs> okay. why, where why else airport? man <laughs> 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 i believe in karan johar stories na every romantic story has a airport <laughs> um you know this thing you highlighted about financial needs and emotional needs i read this amazing thing once about the concept of needs in relationships it said that you can't expect your partner to provide for 10 out of the 10 needs you have yeah. maybe they'll provide 7 maybe they'll provide 8 but the remaining 2 or 3 you're supposed to look for in your own social circle in your own friend circle because humanly no one can ever provide the 10 needs to you so you have to just ask yourself what are the seven or eight important needs i need from them yeah and and also know those other two or three which you need from maybe your best friend maybe from your family maybe yeah. from some relative uh but people don't do this they expect 10 out of 10 needs from that one person the expectations are too high and that's why a lot of relationships break so and the beauty of that is the people who are expecting they themselves are not giving 10 out of 10 yeah. things to the other person yeah it's it's always the case like uh, this is something i've seen as well that if the expectations are extremely high what they're giving in the relationship is also not it doesn't match up to what they expect and then the missing thing you're absolutely right and the missing thing instead of understanding it and say i need it it's okay if you if that person is not giving it to me yeah. right within the frame of trust uh loyalty and whatever are the basic tenant of individuals equation you when you find it i also feel that what people start being bitter mm. and then you disrespecting the seven things you are getting mm. correct right mm. and i think that's the end of a relationship then i'm very happy staying in my own house by myself <laughs> other than this relationship thing uh do you feel like you're looking for anything at the next phase of your life because it's, it's a, a deep question <laughs> yeah <laughs> other other than the relationship thing because that's that's something so many of us are looking for but for, okay for example maybe i'll i'll talk about mine and maybe you can like yeah. connect the dots for yourself um this whole last year was about really asking myself why am i doing what i'm doing is it to mm. fill up some childhood void like why am i working so much mm. and why am i doing so many things mm. and then over time i realized I think I've gotten over my childhood traumas with my own parental mm. issues but this is my identity and this is how my identity has always been maybe it's because of all the TV shows I watched when I was a kid the cartoons I also watched were very motivational mm. so I enjoy the process of building a lot yeah. uh, like I really enjoy the hunt rather than winning something like when we win something I don't enjoy it mm. but i enjoy the process of creating i enjoy the process of building teams mm. sometimes i even enjoy the traumas that you go through uh so i've just figured that that's where i find my enjoyment and in the long term maybe once this whole startup life is done uh i'll probably just get deeper into creation because mm. that keeps you in that process continuously you're always creating things like we're always shooting videos we mm. always nowadays we started vlogs which basically again it adds process on top of process and mm. that's been my answer and that filled up a void for me because at least i got self identity okay this is why i'm doing what i'm doing because who i am as a person is process driven but what would that be for you like what's your next void i think i would love to take an year at some point and just be in florence i love florence I don't know there's something about that city I land and I feel like I, this is my city like what are these people doing in this city mm-hmm. and I have a joke among my friends that every time I go and it's been like 16 17 times I've been there I go to Medici Palace and I feel like it's mine mm-hmm. <laughs> so I want to go to Florence spend couple of months or an year and I just want to write couple of books and um, about your life yeah about lot of my travel stories or what did i pick up and when i look back the way i acted or reacted at that time versus how i look back it is more like talking to younger you with lot of weird adventures associated mm. with it mm. you know and i for some reason had really interesting adventures mm. so i would love to write a lot of it and just like even if nobody finds it interesting at least my niece when i tell her all these things she always find it fascinating i'm thinking <laughs> there're going to be some audiences out there but before we begin our twitter verse round where we take questions <laughs> from twitter you've got to quickly tell us just some highlights maybe three top highlights of your life from your travels don't even think too much what was just coming to your head just like share it with us when i was telling you about writing the first thing which i can never forget is um 
I was in Africa office for IFC and I was doing investments. I was lo- I used to look very young and I was young, but I used to look even younger than what my age was. I think I was 24, 25, but I, everybody used to tell me I used to look 19, 18. I had this meeting with a very senior minister from Nigerian government. And I had an assistant. It's IFC. People come from very different backgrounds. I had an assistant who was a Caucasian. Every time I would do that meeting, and I had the authority to write a check up to eighty million dollar at that point. Every time I would do and ask that minister a question, he would look at my assistant and answer. And then assistant, poor guy, would look at me, thinking, "Why is this guy looking at him?" Mm-hmm. and then i would look at the minister and ask a question and he would again look at the assistant and answer mm. so the first meeting i was like <laughs> what the <hell?"> like <laughs> sexist and racist like everything which i could think of then i'm like i called up my boss and i said this country is this and this guy is this and uh, he was very senior at uh, ifc he said okay that's not my problem you have to deal with it draw your line when you say he has crossed the line of your dignity and you cannot work with him you don't have to mm. we still have to do this project in nigeria and find somebody else to replace you mm. and you know it's never going to be impacted on you so it's your choice so i said okay i'll try again so two three meetings it happened like that then in i asked i so then i went to a uh, only single women minister in the whole cabinet i seeked out to her and i said ma'am this is what's happening with him am i wrong <laughs> am i is it an indian thing is it a women thing is it a young thing what is this <laughs> and then i realized he can't see straight <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> And I created so many stories yeah. about it yeah. based on my four meetings that the whole World Bank is thinking I'm working with a sexist guy. Wow. <laughs> And I was like, "Oh my god." I I went back to the meeting and then I started observing that she was right even when he's talking to his assistants he's looking squintly somewhere else <laughs> which I never observed before because I was just angry mm. it was all about me 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 mm. and then I realized he has three daughters and he literally asked one of his daughters to intern with me wow and so i think it's all about perception yeah and also anger shakes up your sense of observation exactly hmm. so there are a bunch of stories like that which i feel like lot of young people would have another way of looking at the same situation good bad or ugly hmm. it may or may not serve them in every situation hmm. but it's going to be interesting thank you kg <laughs> before we move into the quick twitter verse yeah around. let's see what do they have to ask yeah yeah I uh, you have your own sort of cult following on Twitter. Let's ask that. does Nandara has a question for us. <laughs> why, why I love Nandara by the way. Yeah, same. Why don't you um, introduce the whole Nandara and Queen K and Ranveer concept? Uh guys for who who unfortunately missed our Twitter space. Um and we have to give a big shout out to uh Vijay Shekhar Sharma. who started that twitter space hmm. so i uh, so this is what happened i had a really bad investor call and i wanted to tweet something really mean hmm. so i uh, i i have this hashtag single successful girl woos so <laughs> i wanted to tweet something on that so uh, i go on twitter and i start seeing this twitter space thing happening and it was vijay shekhar sharma and then suddenly while it was happening I see Nantara's face coming up. I'm like, this is interesting, and nothing is happening. Two meetings have got cancelled. Let's click on it. I've never been to Twitter Space before <laughs> that, so I click on it, and I'm listening to them. And uh, Vijay said something about fintech, some data. Like he was chilling, really. He was oh. not even talking about work. He said something, so I raised my hand, and completely not expecting him to. pick me up as a speaker we have recently met at the india today conclave where he was a speaker and so he picked and we started talking and suddenly i see you appearing up <laughs> and my connection to you was all these youtube things like <laughs> all that stuff and the 
you came and I got very excited. <laughs> the reason for excitement at that time was uh, that oh this guy like I wanted to tell you like maybe you need to do blockchain for this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I was like you do so many varied topics and please stay that don't make it a page three. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the plus. Plan. Like I feel like I'm gonna learn mm. something new. about mm. the field which i would otherwise never learn mm. because i won't even know i have to put an effort mm. that i'm interested in this mm. Mm. you know that's the thing which like i have got you at least 180 people following you oh, in us so. all not indians thank you so much um uh, no it's just absolutely worth it like the uh, the The, there was one on astrology there was one on sensuality there was yeah. one which is about uh, some yoga meditation thing and all that stuff yeah, this is also the same adhd we were speaking of that it bounces <laughs> between topics <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's what we did so i uh, and you were just the best smoothest flirt i have <laughs> ever heard in my life <laughs> and the way you made nayanthara and me blushed <laughs> and nayanthara and me are texting each other and we are like nayanthara is like oh my god i'm like and here we are educated smart women who we think like we have the whole world at our feet and we both are behaving like 18 year old like kids yeah i reminded you of your that guy who you took up engineering <laughs> for in on that twitter space <laughs> Oh yeah man I took up his place in your heart <laughs> during that Twitter space. Uh, yeah that's what Twitter space has happened <laughs> and you may Nanda and me to have a little bit of this superficial cat fight of who Ranveer is going to meet uh, you, sorry Nantara I won yeah. but Ranveer is here for you you can have him <laughs> Nantara Nantara you're going to be queen em you're the queen of my heart but i've got one queen of my soul and she's sitting in front uh, of me <laughs> so he has lot of queens one for soul one for body one for brain one for energy that's the harem <laughs> no no but 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 soul it's just you ha <laughs> uh, see because here we because go. we we connect on a very soul level uh, whether it's about talking about jumping between <laughs> topics or engineering college or just podcast in general you know this thing you said about why people need to use podcast to just learn that's my big hope you know that mm. that's the audience we'll tap into but i'm honestly i'm curious to see what happens. I don't know if uh, that's why we start the Hindi show as well, yeah. so that it opens up to the masses. But I'm curious to see will ki will they jump on or not? Yeah, 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 yeah. Even for us to get noticed as an English podcast, we had to first get on a lot of Bollywood. <laughs> Though I really? wanted, yeah, I wanted to do astronomy right from the start. I wanted to oh, do spiritual yeah. stuff, sensuality right from the start, but I couldn't. You know, I want people to know it's cool, yeah. If you like, it's cool to believe in astrology. Yeah. It's cool to believe in spirituality, yeah. and that's not the spirituality which West is trying to sell you. Yeah. It's cool to like there's so many things which you learn growing up which you're like oh it's not cool. <laughs> it's actually okay whatever you want to do yeah. anything which you really believe in is cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we are actually going to have a deep astrology special show soon. Oh my god! So where where we? I'm sending my details before. <laughs> 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 okay, so you've got a lot of cult like. questions oh, but uh, it's a lot not of not giving away any bitcoin ether <laughs> crypto prizes and when they're going to be up guys <laughs> so the, think of this as sort of a rapid fire round okay. like you don't need to go too much coffee with karan now yeah but, but then i might ask you follow up questions which will be my own do i get any hamper or something uh, it's it's one of those hampers that you feel more than you get <laughs> <laughs> They're like zero dollar value. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, no, it. Uh, I'll tell you what. After this podcast recording, I might be joining you in the evening. So yes. I'll get you a hamper then. I'll Perfect. Get you, I'll Done. get you something then. Uh, okay. So the first question is from uh, Rajay. Um, I think this is a question totally in your domain and something we've not tackled in our conversation. <laughs> okay. He's talking about fintech, and he says that fintech industry has been focused on payments, broking, loans, etc. a recent days been focused on crypto but what's the next gen sphere of fintech looking like and what should fintech look out for because uh, again for the absolute amateurs uh fintech is eventually going to replicate the whole financial world but in technology mm. but now the financial world itself is evolving so much yeah yeah so no one no one really like the amateurs can't predict probably finance people can predict mm. it but the amateurs can't so maybe from an amateur perspective what does the future hold i think you know in our elite circle as i call it 
in an elite circle we say it's going to be decentralized finance the way the stock market is working on fiat for your swaps and options and bro, uh, bonds and this and treasuries all this is going to be on crypto with respect to tokens mm. which is already happening as i gave an example of insta dab what they are they have been doing in a real real world honestly um i don't think more than 20% of this world is banked or have access to the things which we take for granted you know or to the experience which we wanted so in i so there has to be a big grassroots level movement which still has to happen you're talking about india asia i'm talking globally india also if you go to villages they, you cannot go and build a brick and mortar branches of the bank today mm. the way africa completely skipped the landline and directly moved to mobile and was able to create mpesa is what india needs to do that's why ptm is working right the most of the users in tier 2 tier 3 cities are not the people who even had the bank account before. wow yeah so but ptm still needs some sort of a bank account we needs to move to neo banks so the neo bank in brazil or what cash app is and all this stuff i i won't know the definition of bank which you and me know today people won't even know that mm. and and this is going to be for those teenagers who are using tiktok today in yeah. villages they need to understand banking uh, probably 5 years in a from very now. different way their banking is going to be different way they're not going to have a checkbooks mm. they're not going to have those uh, papers of bonds and all that stuff mm. no so i feel like but we forget when we talk about fintech that the huge part of fintech are companies like tala the companies like m pesa the companies who are still going and getting people having their first bank accounts on apps for them to have a saving account current account digitally but also to bring them into the credit scoring system by giving them one cent loan a day mm. to a daily laborer mm. and then based on their own performance instead of taking oh he has a house or not how do we build a credit scoring in a traditional world what is your parents credit rating based mm. on they're like oh your dad has a house so the child will start at 600 what have you done for your dad to buy a house mm. you know so they are going and saying you are a daily laborer we don't have any proof that you are actually from bihar but you are in delhi or a migrant laborer da 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 will take a risk and will give you 5 rupee ka 5 rupee loan now based on how will you return us 5 rupee next time we'll give you 10 next time 15 next time 5 500 rupee mm. so you are creating your own based on your character mm. so that is a whole level of fintech which is going to grow and has to grow for a equal financial inclusivity Mm-hmm. Then for the elite, I would go back and say DeFi is the word. Could you explain what that is? So DeFi is once you are on crypto, what can you do? Crypto is a currency. So same thing as you do normal currency. You have rupee, you have Bitcoin. You can use that rupee, put it in saving account, one percent, two percent, whatever annual interest. Same thing with Bitcoin. You leave it in the exchange. They'll give you some return. Then you go to stock market. and then you start buying bonds and treasuries based on your risk appetite you start investing the investing in crypto is decentralized finance mm. you know you're going to have different products coming out of it so there are apps like uh, there are protocols decentralized finance protocol like aave sushi swap compound uniswap that's what they are doing so coming back to the twitter verse around uh, this question from sg7331 uh what are the perks and the disadvantages of studying abroad rather than studying in india and what are the cultural and intellectual benefits this is a very very good question i think for me um the difference is i think you need to find your tribe because what i got out of my college honestly like i also studied in uh, in india i started at mit before i moved to mit uh then i did my masters from there from george washington um i think it's about the intellectual level or the space to ask questions which i found in my time which is back in 2000 only 2000 india didn't have that space where you question your professors and your teachers and you can actually have an constructive answer 
but i heard i've really heard that is changing here i no, have not yeah. experienced it i don't have kids <laughs> so i don't know in in few universities they've set up that kind of culture yeah. that where you can talk to your professor on a on a you know one to one level yeah. but overall the country is still where as you know it mm. as as you so, knew it. so i i teach at stanford now i teach two classes there when i'm teaching and i have this these kids all over the world they feel it is their right to question me and everything i'm teaching the sometime even i am irritated as a teacher i'm like just google it <laughs> <laughs> either trust me or google it like wow. but then i look back and i'm like super fascinating because i miss that so for me the thing which i find amazing in uk us culture in education is your professor is not hierarchically listen and go mm. he is a person who's going to give you knowledge by you questioning and questioning about how you are understanding got it because our communications are really broken yaar even mm. with everything between friends whom you feel like you know so well you don't get the yeah. right pers- perception of the things yeah. this is why whenever i speak to american entrepreneurs or anyone who's lived in american mm. culture they're way better conversationalists yeah. like the conversation flows they listen also like there is that difference in energy all because all our exams in india is like this is the question now write an answer and the answer is from the book if you have added something from outside that 100 year old book even if it is right the teacher actually give you a logic i didn't give you number because this is not from the material mm. over there all the teacher is going to ask oh very interesting you have to quote the source mm. that's it mm. they're going to double check the source mm. so you can go anywhere across the globe and bring that information yeah yeah so i think that is the huge difference yeah. um said that what i miss about indian education system when i was doing my masters is uh, the rigorousness of it i think some pressure some rigorousness setting up a higher goal are ve- these thing these three things are very important it, gives it you makes toughness. you competitiveness it gives you toughness it also pushes people who could be very smart just lazy mm mm we all like the way our family structure is i remember when i was living at home i don't remember waking up and making my own bed yeah mm-hmm. till i was not pushed for something i didn't do it yeah. that was a part of a bringing yeah so i think that part is missing and uh, i think the follow up question was the cultural aspect of it uh, like what what did it give you for life would you say conversation only like i think it gave me understanding that there the same thing can be said and understood on a lot of different way because people are coming from all over the world and they are bringing their biases they are bringing their perspective and they are also bringing an extra knowledge which is culturally which you cannot read and get mm. you know so i learn a typical way of doing calculus so it's an example like i learn how to solve a particular math equation calculus and all those things in a very cbsc mm-hmm. way or at mit or do this when i started solving a problem in the media lab a person with me who was working was from israel they solved the same problem in a different way mm. it's nothing about right or wrong it's their education system mm. and when we go deeper when we went deeper in the research i realized some of the ways he d- was doing was faster and more accurate in a bigger long equation than the way i was doing yeah yeah so even to have that exposure is what happens and it is not about american system or british system it is about having a multi pot like a melting pot sorry yeah yeah of so many different cultures and perspectives yeah yeah um which again brings me back to the podcast that's that's <laughs> what we're getting same questions different answers yeah um whether it is a political opinion whether it is business knowledge whether it is cultural knowledge when you get a 360 degree perspective about it from different people that's what eventually gives you the right raw material to construct your own perspective yeah. on it okay very interesting question again mm-hmm. because our conversation was based around startups and entrepreneurship that much sayan dev bhattacharya asks is can an entrepreneur live in a completely free state of mind for one day and this is after your observation of all these people it really depends what stage his company is when you are starting a company you are a visionary hmm 
बहुत सीरीज भी यू आर एन ऑपरेशन मैनेजर बिकॉज योर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इज सो बिग दे इज नो टाइम टू टेक दैट डे आउट बीन अ वाइल विद योर सेल्फ एंड जस्ट थिंक वॉट्स नेक्स्ट एंड लॉर्ड ऑफ टॉप फाउंडर्स हैव स्टार्टेड डूइंग इट बट देन दे हैव टू दे कैन डू इट एट आई पी ओ एट सी डी सी डी वेन दे कैन हायर सी ओ ओज एंड ऑल दोज रियली अमेजिंग एक्सपीरियंस पीपल टिल देन दिस इज द जर्नी how long is that usually in terms of time like i know you can't average it out really but roughly what would you say um it it really depends upon people but in the first one year is all about being visionary every day you will get time <laughs> to mm. think about the product mm-hmm. as soon as you close your series a and you are hiring you are just an operation manager yeah because you are just oiling the machine to machine to run and that brings me back to what you said about the best founders are passionate about it every day because yeah. only the passion will get you through dedicating your life to a project that stress 18 hours and yeah. responsible for like 50 people 100 people salary yeah yeah 100% um it's also given me kind of an input on what i can possibly do at the later stage of my life because i'm just <laughs> like you uh, i want to bounce between Next. <laughs> projects um okay this one's from timsi rajpal Mm. uh and she's been an avid follower of the show she's also beautiful just ah, want to of mention course. that <laughs> one girl question and here starts and we <laughs> no no but but she is like and she's been she sent she always sends in her questions i'm sorry i'm just lost in her db i'm kidding <laughs> uh but uh, timsi's question is based on your own professional experience what's your advice for a young lady who's trying to take a leap forward in an unconventional career who's trying to leap towards an unconventional mm. career uh say something like capital markets which is considered extremely risky uh but i think basic the basic question is someone who's thinking that okay i can do that like can a, i or can yeah. i not uh yeah or probably has a vision of hmm i i should do that but it maybe doesn't have the bravery or the confidence yet timsi first of all apart from beautiful you're very smart <laughs> because this question is very smart um if you are asking this question it means you already have something in your mind which is very strong and honestly you don't need any external verification or support because if you are really strong about something go and do it what is the worst case scenario it's not going to work anyways thinking sitting at home it's not working yeah. out yeah it does it mean anybody is going to say you wasted 6 months of your life no mm. because the lessons you're going to learn on failure is actually going to make you successful. Yeah. I want to highlight this one uh, I forgot the exact statistic mm. but it's something like 9 out of 10 guys will attempt men. Mm. 9 out of 10 men will attempt something even if they don't have the qualifications or capability mm. of doing it. And if a woman has if women if there are 10 women and they have the qualifications and capability of doing a certain task something like only 3 or 4 would attempt it. There was this detailed study done. I mean the uh what's it called the number of people was much larger than yeah. 10 but they came up with this statistic and the the conclusion of the study was that again maybe it's culture maybe it's society maybe it's genetical i don't know i think for me the way i look at it is the financial security mm. because women have just started working they yeah. have just started becoming financially secure yeah. so even if you look at our grandparents and a generation before and our dad women are now creating their own wealth so the first generation of women creating their own wealth wants to be very safe mm. they don't want to take risk i also feel there needs to be reference points yeah like you need to look up to like one full generation of people say okay if they could do it i can also and yeah. the world is very and and first i thought this is just india mm. but it's actually all over the world it's everywhere yeah also i feel like something my dad said beautifully and sorry guys i keep on coming back to my dad no, no. um I remember I was doing an internship and I was not happy. There was something going on in our dynamics. This is like way before me to movement when as a woman you don't even understand if there's something wrong happening or something is not acceptable. Nobody tells you. There's no educational class to tell you what is acceptable and not acceptable. It's a gut feeling. So there was something happening with this guy and I would always would cringe as soon as that senior person would enter the It's room. Creepy. something there was something he never said anything to me the way he would look the way he would just touch and go there was something my whole body and i grew up with guys i was very tomboy in my life so i but i didn't know so one day i was talking to dad and i just started crying and he's like why are you crying and he's like 
I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. And I was blaming myself while explaining wow. my dad this. I was finding every excuse in the book even to tell my dad, I'm sorry, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm like defending myself even before telling him what happened. And nothing happened at that point. You know, he just said, he listened. He said, so you didn't do anything. Why are you crying? I'm like, I don't know. I just feel weird. And now I have to go with him to this thing for the whole day. I just don't want to sit in that car. And uh, he said, listen, always remember, whatever you're doing in your life is your choice. Your worst case scenario is to leave everything, come back to this house where you will always have a food on the table. And that worst case scenario of your life are people's dream. So compromise where you want to compromise. Don't compromise the things which you don't want to because the house is here. Mm. And I think that has given me so much confidence throughout my life that I always think if I am taking a risk, like when I was going to Africa, I was taking a salary cut and I was letting off a promotion I was about to get and moving it two years in a normal case scenario. Uh, I was like, if it won't work out, I have somebody who's actually going to cook for me instead of me cooking every day. <laughs> that is good. Mm -hmm. And I just made it as a good way of thinking, let's just take a risk and we'll see. Mm -hmm. So I think that support system nowadays, I start seeing from dads coming mm -hmm. very strongly. Yeah. Or content, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's honestly the big hope. I feel whenever, if you, if you feel, you know, there's that uh, saying by Mahatma Gandhi that be the change you wish to see in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a content creator, you start feeling that more and more as your career yeah. goes forward. Like if you're if you're questioning them, why is this wrong? What can we do to fix it? Make content about it. Because over time you realize that content, just like parenting, sits very deep in a person's head if they really find themselves within that content piece. Yeah, because we also have this thing now. If um, I'm giving a gyan, I will not take it from the people I know very well. Mm. But a people I may not know, but I think I have a perception that person has done well. I'll take yeah. it very seriously. And I think that's what you're doing from here. I mean, yeah, I, I, I try, again, I try not uh, analyzing the content a bit too much at this stage. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, Ranveer, I have to say this. Um, I'm sure there are so many people like me who found you based completely on the content. Yeah. We only found your floating skills later <laughs> and the charming skills, I would say. But on a serious note, it's the power of the content which gets us connected to something like this, right? For me, it is another bucket list. Yeah, I found a content guy on YouTube sitting in SF in New York and now I'm here yeah. after like a year and a half with no connection. Yeah. Please make it clear I didn't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what, that's what people think that uh, there's, there's a monetary angle involved in some of these podcasts and it's really not. But No, yeah, not even to... coffee. I've only got water. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got you. Did you read my tweet? No, uh, no, I didn't. Okay, you should, you should read my tweet. I got you the world's best coffee. Oh, yes. I'm a big coffee. K, Queen K, oh. Queen Kavitha. I got to say thank you from the bottom of my heart oh, for, for giving me so many of my answers through this very kind of multi-directional conversation. Uh, I think that's where we connect as people also. We like learning about different subjects. I've learned so much from just talking to you in these two, three hours. Uh, you've also broken some of my perspectives. I'm happy that some of them are broken. But uh, I honestly don't know how to thank you. And I think you already know that I wish to have you on the show many, many more times. So every time you're on Bombay, please let us know and we'll create some magic for the internet. No, thank you so much for having me. Now I have another soulmate in my life. <laughs> yes, that's because you're the queen of my soul. Ah. So uh, I just got to highlight that as well. Uh, what I do suggest to the listeners is uh, follow uh, Queen K on Twitter. And please join our Twitter spaces at some point. I'm going to start doing those again. Yes. Uh, now I will switch off this podcast because I also need to have my offline conversation <laughs> with Queen K. Any parting notes for the audience? Be adventurous. Mm. And follow you on your new thing, Spotify. Ah, yeah. Follow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You really follow, the show. follow us on Spotify. A green, you just did a green room. Yeah, I did a green room. Uh, this is this whole new social media wave that's happening. That's a whole other conversation. So I would say, guys, look at this. I'll, 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 my parting note is, you are an amazing, inspiring journey for a lot of people. 
I'll tell you why. Even to do some work of mine, you still need that educational background in finance, bonds, this and that. What you have done is a guy who was figuring out YouTube to actually a product like Spotify coming to you and say, we are doing a new, launching a new product. You be the face of that product based on your intelligent conversations, your creation and the analytics you have, not because you're the top paid actor. Mm. Is literally literally breaking every norm yeah i think it's that uh, there is a new wave of media happening all over the world what you you highlighted aib earlier yeah, yeah. now there's a whole generation of mini aibs but that that also tells that brands also acknowledge yeah. that people know who are the real heroes and who are not mm. following just screen players are not the reality anymore yeah yeah so congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank I am going to follow you. everything you're doing on oh, Spotify. Thank you. There's a <laughs> lot of amazing stuff coming up, which again, I will tell you offline <laughs> because we will end this podcast. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Queen. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that was the episode for today, guys. Considering where I am in my own life with building all these startups, building tech startups for the first time, I'm at that position where I need some intense mentorship and this conversation was exactly that, a mentorship session for me. After the conversation, Kavita actually mentored me specifically about the startups that I was building. And I realized that, man, she's got an inspirational story. She's got so much insight on all these domains related to tech. But more importantly, she's just got insight on how to make it in life. So if you're a listener who feels like you're stuck somewhere, if you feel like you've hit a brick wall, it's conversations like this that will really pick you up. That's exactly what this one did for me. And remember, conversations like this are available on The Ranveer Show. Make sure you check out our entire library of beautiful, inspirational episodes on Spotify. We're a Spotify exclusive now, which means that every episode is available on Spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. Keep supporting TRS and we're going to be bringing Kavita Gupta back on The Ranveer Show. Now that you guys have got to know her, the next time... I think it'll be brilliant if you guys could send in some detailed, hardcore startup and VC and fintech related questions for this legend. Watch out. Follow us on Twitter as well. Stay in touch with Team Beer Biceps.